What the heck does the world look like to a bug? Their eyes are just so different from ours. I'll break this down for both flies and bees. Flies see the world in slow motion and have wildly different vision than us because of their funky compound eyes made up of thousands of lenses. Each of a fly's compound eyes is made up of over 3,000 little eyes called omatidia. Each of these contains its own lens and a cluster of photoreceptor cells. This means that a fly's vision is a mosaic with thousands of tiny images being stitched together to form one large image. Each little eye has its own nerve fiber connected to the optic nerve and the fly's brain and can see almost 360 degrees around them at once. However, flies can't focus the images they see, like how we do that by changing the shape of the lens in our eye to either focus on things up close or further away. They're also really nearsighted and can't see clearly more than a few yards away. Flies are colorblind. Flies only have two cones or color detecting cells instead of three like us. They can't see red, which in humans is a kind of red-green color blindness called protanopia. One fourth of the nerve cells in their tiny brains are dedicated to the perception of motion. They process information more than four times faster than us, letting them perceive the world in slow motion by our standards. Flies, hairs, and antenna also feel the air move as you start trying to swat them, giving them an early warning. However, flies struggle to see objects that aren't moving. They struggle to see things standing still because the neurons in their brains have a feedback loop that compares the contrast they detect with that of the neurons around them. This feedback loop makes them crazy good at detecting motion, but it largely ignores things not in motion. Bees have five eyes that give them unbelievable vision. Bees have two different types of eyes. They have two large compound eyes. In addition to these big compound eyes, bees have three smaller eyes in the middle of their head called ocelli. These three eyes maintain the bees' stability and help them navigate. They triangulate the bees' position relative to the sun, helping them find their way back home after their adventures. Bees see wavelengths of light that are invisible to us, helping them better spot flowers that they can get nectar from. Like humans, bees are trichromatic, meaning that they have three different types of cones or color detecting cells in their eyes. However, rather than just seeing the same visible colors as us, bees can see ultraviolet light that has shorter wavelengths than the light that we can see. Flowers look a lot different to bees than us because special pigments on flowers absorb UV light. This creates vibrant patterns on the flowers that guide bees to the right plants that they can get nectar from. They can't see red though, so anything red would appear black or gray to bees. Putting red plants in your garden actually makes bees less likely to come there looking for nectar. The colors we can see that are most likely to catch bees' attention are purple and blue. In addition to seeing ultraviolet light, bees can see the polarization of light, which describes the orientation of light waves moving through the air. Sunlight moving through particles in the air creates certain polarization patterns that act like a bee GPS, guiding them and helping them create a mental map of their surroundings. Bees also see the world in slow motion by our standards. They can detect motion in as little as one three hundredth of a second, letting them notice individual flowers while flying at high speeds. As if all of this wasn't cool enough, scientists from the University of Bristol discovered that bees can sense a flower's electric field. Bees build up positive electric charge as they fly through the air, kind of like if you run across a carpet in socks. Flowers have a slightly negative electric charge. Bees are able to tell if the charge of a flower is more positive, meaning that another bee has already beaten them to the flower and slurped up the tasty nectar. This difference in electric charge also makes pollen jump from flowers onto bees. 
Scientists aren't exactly sure how bees sense this electric field, but I imagine it's similar to how if you rub a balloon on your head, you can then feel the electric field as that balloon gets close to you. What other animals would you like me to cover in this series? Please leave a comment if you think of something cool, and also please subscribe if you found this interesting. Thanks.